The authentic recipes for all of our products are signature to La Morena. The chilies are literally hand-picked for each can. Everything is manufactured in Mexico and imported into the U.S. La Morena is best known for its quality and authentic flavor, giving our users a taste of home. Stock up on flavor with La Morena. I'm Mark and we're mass purveyors and here today talking about pork and we're here with the Flaming Greek. So Mark, what is this, a center cut? Yeah, this is a center cut pork loin and what we're going to do is we're going to make pork chops today. So we're going to take the pork loin and we're going to clean it up, we're going to make it look presentable, nice and pretty, so this way it looks good going on the grill. So first so we have a center cut pork loin, to show you a little bit, there's the eye. That's the inside. Nice piece gonna, of meat. So we're going to get this all ready for, for, for the grill. Right, so why don't we step over to the uh, machine. Go ahead. And we'll have to put it on the bandsaw. And we have to cut some of this bone off so we can put the knife in between it. Well, I'll follow you. OK. So we're going to make this steak ready by taking the shiny bone off. If you notice these ribs on this side, they look like the, the little spare ribs. This is called the baby back ribs. So if you can see it, that's where the baby back rib comes from. It's from the loin, which is this item here. So we're going to take the... So is there anything you could do with that? Well, that's just bones, maybe for some stock. Right. But nothing, nothing else. Right. Most of the meat is still on the, on the loin. Follow me, we're going to clean this up at the table. So we've taken the chine bone out, and now we're going to basically clean this up so we can French it to make pork chops. All right, I'm looking. I'm okay. listening. So now the back is nice. The idea is to, to French, to basically take the knife, and we're cutting across the bone. And remember, what I was saying to you before is you always want to make sure that your hands are not in the way of the meat, in the blade. Correct. So is that piece you're cutting off? You could use that for something. Well, yeah, you can use this for stews, but it's got a little sinew in it. Right. And it's a little yeah. tough, so you really is better off to grind it. If you can make, you want to make ground pork with meatballs uh, mixed with beef. That's you know, it. A lot of people use veal, pork, and beef yes. for their mix. This would be good to you know, throw in with your, uh, with your meatballs. All right, so you can cut these as thick as you want to cut them. In between, and you wrap them with bacon. You can do all sorts of things with this. You know, it's so versatile, you know, a pork chop, you can... Uh, the other white meat. And, and pork, by the way, let's talk about um, price-wise. Pork right now is the cheapest it's ever been. Uh, go through a little history. Uh, last year, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a concern because there was a, a, a flu between uh, pigs. Right. So they lost a lot of, a lot of uh, inventory. So they were worried about not having enough inventory this year, so they overproduced. And what happened was the dollar got strong, which meant the other country's value went down. So before it used to make sense for them to take pork product from the United States 
and bring it to China or bring it to other countries. But now because the dollar got stronger, they need more dollars in their country to buy our product. That's correct. So they came off of buying pork from the United States. So anticipating that we were going to be selling pork to the to, to other countries, they overproduced. And now the other, other countries don't want to buy the product because they can't afford it. So now we're stuck with a lot of pork. And that's what drove the price down. Great value for the families here in the United States. Right, so pork chops, I mean, you can get pork chops right now for under three, four dollars a pound in the supermarket. So it's a great value. So what I'm doing right now, uh, Chris, is Frenching. See how I'm taking the meat out in between yes. the bones? So this way you can either hold it, right. you know, on the barbecue, you can turn it, and we're gonna clean it up, just to give you an idea. That looks like a delicious piece of pork. Right, so we have two, four, six, eight, eight ribs, right? So we take eight ribs down, and we're gonna cut it across. So is this marble here, is what I'm seeing at the end of this loin? That's marble, no? Well, yeah. Well, this is the grains that they're feeding. How beautiful right. is that? Yeah. You very seldomly, when I go to the market, I don't see this product like this. Well, again, the product that we're, that we're buying Superior. is for restaurants, right? And it's not for supermarkets. Right. So we have to go with a, with a, a higher-end pork. People, you don't know what you're missing. Master purveyors. Well, they can go right. and patronize the restaurants that we sell to. Uh, sure, or else they can buy direct from you. I mean, we sell pork chops to a lot of steakhouses, um, Bobby, Bobby Vans. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just cleaning the bone. After we French this nice and clean, you can start cutting singles or doubles. Cutting singles and doubles. So you can see, Chris, how we made the bone nice and clean? Yes. OK. So Very we, presentable. So we can do one single or double uh, pork chops. So I, li I like them uh, to cut them double. But for the purposes of the, uh, for, for today. Beautiful, how nice is that? And you don't often see them with the bone in like this. Well, be well in the supermarkets they buy them boneless. Right. Because they use the rib cage as baby back ribs. Right. So they sell baby back ribs for more money. Restaurant quality. Right. It looks so much nicer with the bone presentation. I should be using the bigger knife. Okay. Let's so, think of double pork chop. Double. See now, this is thick enough to where what you could do is make a cavity in there, and you could stuff it with anything. You can marinate it in cream sherry, you know, stuff it with you know gorgonzola, feta cheese, red bell peppers, eggplant, all sorts of things. And, and there like he this. goes. So That's the idea is when you want to when you right. want to make a pocket, right? And you can hollow you, it out. You hollow it out, so your knife goes in in a small section, and you go all the way on the inside, cutting on the interior. Right, so this way it stays inside right. when you make the uh, pocket. So as you can see, we just to give you an idea. And that you can stuff. Yes. Or pork chops and applesauce. Oh, what would you use applesauce? No, what I would do with that is eggplant, red bell peppers, feta cheese, gorgonzola, anything. You know, and marinate it, you know, in a cream sherry or a grand marnier and stick it on a hot grill. Delicious. And that's how you cut a whole pork loin down to pork chops for either single or double chops or double chops with a pocket. So what I'm gonna do is take that with me. I'm gonna wrap it with bacon and some apple and I'm gonna throw it on the grill. Oh, sounds great. And I'll see you there, right? Thanks for coming to Master Purveyors. Thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Chef Joe Simonero with Taste This Television here to talk to you about Accelerator Hand Dryer. You know, keeping up with hygiene, washing my hands, and making sure that there's no transfer of bacteria is important for me and Taste This TV, which is why I rely on a machine like Accelerator to dry my hands. It's efficient, it's strong, and it's powerful. And it only uses up electricity and energy when you put your hands under and take them away. So for drying my hands in the kitchen, I rely on the accelerator to handle all of those needs. For more information, log on to the website at the bottom of the screen.
Hey, I'm the Flaming Greek, and we got a great show for you today. We got some ribeye, and we have some pancake mat batter. Um, this got just thrown in front of me just a while ago, and it's finely milled whole cricket powder, as in like Jiminy crickets. All right, so they say we can eat this stuff, so we're gonna go for it. So I'm gonna mix up um, some pancake batter, which I already did. It, it's delicious, guys, man. You gotta try this stuff, man. Cricket powder. All right, so. We'll heat up a pan. All right, we're gonna start with this ribeye. Get that pan a little hotter. The grill's good and hot. Salt and pepper. A little olive oil. Face down. All right, this is an aged um, piece of um, ribeye. Once again, for master purveyors. Tender stuff, good stuff. Salt and pepper, that's all you need. So we're gonna do a traditional steak and eggs. Now some people like their eggs sunny side up and some people like them um, scrambled. I'm going to do these scrambled. So let this just sit here for a bit. Get that good and seared. All right, while the steak's cooking, let me tell you why I like steak and eggs. There's a lot of times, you know, for dinner, you use leftovers. Next morning, you got some steak left over. Eggs are always in a refrigerator. You just do the traditional steak and eggs. And you could do French toast, pancakes, as we're doing as of today, with yes, once again, I'll repeat it one more time, finely milled whole cricket powder. And this is what we're gonna use the actual base for as far as pancakes are concerned. All right, let's see, torch this up. That takes about three minutes off the actual cooking time. Always like a good fire, hot grill. Boy, it's probably about 85 degrees out here right now. So we'll do this like medium. All right, we're gonna start with the eggs, a little olive oil. Start beating the eggs up. Now with eggs, you can put cheese in there. Put a little salt, a little pepper. Olive oil serves for a good pe for a good um, reason because of the taste. So the rest of this pepper in here. And you're almost done. Get the pan a little hotter. Make an omelet. Or we'll go back to the original plan.
That was quick. Let's give that another couple minutes till it starts to bleed. Bone in ribeye. All right, we're gonna take this off because it's just about done and then we're gonna be right back with your cricket pancakes. Hang in there, guys. For generations, our family has perfected authentic Mexican dishes from seasoned chicken and beef to carnitas, arroz, and barbacoa. The Cardenas family has always followed the traditions of their ancestors when it comes to cooking. From the beginning, they've created authentic Mexican dishes from scratch using recipes that have been passed down and perfected over generations. This tradition of gathering around a great meal with family and friends is what their here, foods, strives to pass on. From our family to yours. This got just thrown in front of me just a while ago and it's finely milled whole cricket powder, as in like Jiminy crickets. All right, so they say we can eat this stuff, so we're gonna go for it. So I'm gonna mix up um, some pancake batter, which I already did. It, it's delicious, guys, man. You gotta try this stuff, man. Cricket powder, all right? All right, we're getting ready to do our um, cricket pancakes. Let's make sure the pan's hot. We'll speed it up. olive oil and a pancake batter. All right, the way you do pancakes is, is that you wait until the actual starts bubbling up and then it's time to turn it. You can get the camera on here to start to see it starting to bubble. I think this tradition started back in like the turn of the century. You know, people started to get more money. They had farms, you know, the cattle or whatever, and the traditional steak and eggs with the pancakes, French toast, all that good breakfast stuff. You know, you get a lot of people around the world, and my late father-in-law was from um, Zimbabwe, Africa. Big thing over there, eating crickets. I guess there's protein in them. You know, they come in a bag, dried out, salted. Actually not bad, crunchy. Let's get this pan hot, hotter. All right, this looks about done. And there you have the traditional steak eggs with pancake. Don't forget the syrup and the butter. All right, guys, I'm gonna eat this thing up real quick. It's delicious, but thanks for watching. I'm the Greek, I'll see you next time.